Good afternoon. My name is Jay Rothman and welcome to Real People, Real Stars. This afternoon, I am excited to have Ann Miller in the studio with me. Welcome to the studio, Ann Miller. Thank you, Jay. For those of you that uh, may or may not know who Ann is, I'm just going to give a brief introduction, a bio. Uh, well, today, Ann Miller is a published author. After 26 years in the corporate world, her experience with Reiki began in 2015. She embraced new directions in her journey and career leading to a life's purpose of helping others. She has empowered and transformed countless lives through Reiki and quantum energy therapy, mediumship and intuitive life coaching as the owner of Angelic Hands. Welcome to the studio, Ann. Um, it's Thanks. been some time. You are, this is your second appearance on Real People, Real Stories. We, uh, we met just earlier in the year, first quarter. We were both in Las Vegas at the Quantum Revolution Tour uh, for a weekend retreat. And uh, as we chatted, the last time you came into the studio, we, we met then in, uh, uh, face to face. And uh, in the moment, you felt like there was a, there was a connection between us and uh, at some point, you realized that you wanted to reach out to me, and you did, and you said, you know, I'd really like to consider being a guest on one of your future shows. I'd like to share my story, and, uh, and so that, in fact, took place in um, the early to late spring, and then um, bet all between that time and when we first met, you actually decided to pen a book. And the book is called From Heart to Pen to Paper. And I've got a copy of it here. You were so gracious to gift me a copy. Um, and I'm, I was excited to read this book as I had, you had shared some, a couple of poems. It's a book of poems. But rather than me get into the, into the book, I'm going to invite you to kind of start where you feel comfortable talking a little bit about what led up to the book. And uh, then we'll get into the, what it was like to, to, to write this book and uh, how your life has changed since we met back in early to late spring. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Wow, this has been quite a, a journey for me. Um, so back in March in Vegas at Jessica Alstrom's Quantum Revolution Tour, after that, the three days of being immersed in that um, healing environment and um, shedding old layers, shedding old wounds. Um, looked over at my my best friend Tina and I said, "You're not going to believe this. I I need to grab my pen and I need to grab my journal. I have these words flowing through me right now." And I wrote my first poem. We were sitting out by by the pool that afternoon, and the words just continued to flow. And it was words of love, being able to open up my heart space to love. Um, so I'm definitely not ashamed to say this. I've had different muses that have been in my life um, that were inspiration for the poems, especially for the chapter from the heart, where I really talk about romance and love and falling in love and um, being in a, in a relationship and allowing myself to be vulnerable and everything that, that comes with that. And this goes even deeper than, than just uh, love for others. It was really about coming home to me, feeling whole again. And I've been on this journey since about, say, 1990, 91 based on a lot of different health challenges that I had at the time, continued to, um, you know, fast forward to, to 2015, I had some very significant changes that happened in my life that really propelled me on this journey to where I'm at now. And I continue to empower myself with knowledge and information and finding different ways that were therapeutic for me to get what was in here out. So it was writing and 
you know, with, with this book, it was a lot of inner child healing and self-love, self-compassion, self-respect, talking about that sweet surrender, surrendering to the process, having faith and trusting that I was on the path that, that was correct for me. There's so many different things that I've tried and that I've been doing and trying it on myself first and then sharing that information, sharing those tools, sharing those techniques, sharing that information with others, with whether that be my clients and or my loved ones and letting others know that if I can do this, you can do this, never give up on you. I'm worth it, you're worth it. So this whole journey with this book has been so exciting and therapeutic. And I've had many, many tears come up um, when I would, you know, let the words flow and take that, you know, what was in here in my heart, take my, my pen, take it to paper and write each poem down as the words flowed through me. Knowing that each one served a purpose and writing it down, reading it, and then reading the words out loud, giving myself permission to feel, letting the tears come up. There was anger, letting the anger come up, visualizing this as a healing vehicle, not only for myself, but seeing it as something that I truly needed to share with the world, share these words, that hope, giving others hope that even if you don't see that, that light at the end of the tunnel, know that there is hope to be able to pull yourself out of a situation that may be toxic for you, whether that be a relationship, being in an environment where there's domestic violence, domestic abuse. I'm a survivor of, of sexual abuse. I was abused by my uncle when I was sexually abused by my uncle when I was 11 and being able to find the courage to move forward on my path with my healing and everything that went with it. And I'm so grateful for all of the many teachers and mentors and guides that have walked with me every step of the way, holding space for me and reminding myself to not give up on me, that I am here for a reason. And I truly believe that those that have hurt us the most actually love us the most. They have been some of my biggest teachers and I have been the student and vice versa. So I really took this journey when I laid everything out and really looked through all the poems that I wrote and, and separated everything and looked at, okay, this is inner child healing. This is about love and romance. This is about um, who I am, why I'm here, new beginnings, sharing that journey through my eyes from my heart of where I've been and where I'm going. And I am driven, I am focused, I am here to be the example, to lead by example, and to show others the way and to hold space. That day when you started to write, uh, as you just described it, had you written before? Had you written poems about your life, um, what, why was this day different than all the days that preceded? As a little girl, I would write poems. I would make believe. 
I would pretend that I was a teacher and I would have my imaginary audience or have my stuffed animals as my students. And I remember writing, writing poetry, but from years of hearing the words, stop being so sensitive, stop crying, or I'm gonna give you something else to cry about. I heard that one, boy. Boy, yeah. oh boy. <laughs> Rest my dad's soul, yeah. Uh, well, of course, I, I wasn't old enough to recall it, but my mom reminded me of some of those yeah. things that uh, my dad did or invited him, invited me to do stop crying or also give me something to cry about when I was crying in a crib. Yes. So through years of hearing negative, you know, negativity instead of positive reinforcements that every child should hear, to call that that conscious parenting. A lot of us didn't have that. I know that I chose all of these experiences. I know I chose my parents. I know I chose to be the daughter, knowing that we came here to help each other move forward or help our souls to move forward. And as a child, it was something that I did for, that I did for fun. And now as, as an adult, it was more of a, of a healing journey for me. And to be able to share my thoughts with others. So my intention is through poetry, through my words, to be an inspiration to others and to know that this gift that I had as a little girl, even though it lay dormant for so many years, there's a reason why all of this opened up at the time that it did. As I when continue you, to move forward. When, when you um, got into the flow of, of writing this, this incredible, this book, you know, I, you had shared a couple of the, the poems while you were in the process of writing and uh, you shared it because you, you also invited me to endorse your book. And so I, I was treated with a, an advanced experience and I love what I read. And, um, but to sit here and really um, read this book from front to back, um, it was just, it's just in a beautiful expression. Um, it, the poems were all came from the, the space of love and forgiveness. I'd like to invite you to, to, to kind of deep dive a little bit into this topic of forgiveness, because um, how, how, how have you navigated through that process of forgiving uh, some of your greatest teachers as you describe them? What has that looked like for you? And has, this, has writing this book of poetry um, helped you do some additional healing when, as it relates to forgiveness? Yes, it has definitely been a healing tool for me and my journey. And through forgiveness, it was first starting with me forgiving myself for hurting others, forgiving myself every time I hurt me, knowing that my inner child was responding every cell in my body was responding. Forgiveness of what my uncle did to me as, as a young child. Forgiveness of what my parents weren't able to provide when I was a young child, knowing that they did the best that they could with what they had available. I love both of them, forgiveness of past relationships, 
looking at the role that I played and the role that they served. Was I the victim or was I the perpetrator? What role did I serve? And being able to forgive and knowing that there was a lot of that deep inner work and a big part of that was taking my power back, speaking my truth, what is truth to me, and choosing me, my heart, choosing to love all of me, the me, myself, and I. This year has been, spirit, this year has been huge for me. <laughs> Tell me about the me, myself, and I a little bit. Who, who is me, myself, and I? And what role do all three play in your life? So I have the ego, have the inner child, have higher self, my soul. And actually having conversations with these different pieces of me which is me and asking, do you have a message for me? Inner child, what would you like to do for fun today? Inner child, what's making you sad today? Inner child, what are you afraid of? Inner child, why is there this pain in your body? Higher self, show me the way. I have a a lot of emotions coming up from this right now. Knowing that this is all me. And I made the decision this year to go all the way with my healing and to continue on. And I'm grateful for my mentor, Jessica Alstrom, and for the QRT in Vegas and for the QRT in Kansas City and embracing the I am, knowing that I am worthy, I am enough, and I am love, and I am capable of loving myself and loving others. Being able to identify with these different parts of me, knowing that it's all me. How do we take it from those, what, some of the words you just used, you're describing um, affirmations, you know, strong affirmation statements, words about ourselves. Um, the question has come up in my community, even in coaching. Okay, so I say these affirmations daily. What changes from saying it to knowing it? What changes from saying it to feeling it? How do we take it from saying the words to actually knowing that it that this is in fact your truth? Is there a process that that you have utilized in your healing journey that you know you, you talk about from taking it from heart to pen to paper? How do you take it from words to, to heart? How does it become part of your truth today? There's been so many layers to this and to answer your question, there's many layers to this and it's making a commitment to do the work, knowing that any healer, any coach, any, any therapist, we hold space for others, but you are ultimately choosing to do the work. A lot of it is deprogramming a lot of this old information that we receive from early on as a child and integration of new programs, clearing out the, that you know, jumbled up hard drive that's inside of us, 
knowing that this starts from the root chakra all the way up. If your root is saying one thing and your crown is saying something else, you're going to have this constant disconnect where they're not going to be in yeah. agreement. Do you remember, um, remember you're, I know you're, you will remember this um, in the old days before FM radio came out, we had the, we had the AM radio and even early on in the FM days, you had the radio dial and what did it, what was, what did it sound like when you were in between stations? You remember that noise? Yes. <laughs> yeah. And if you're a millennial or a generation Z, um, you, you have no idea what I'm talking about unless one of your parents or grandparents have a vintage radio, but it's, it, it was static. Some refer to it as white noise. Um, that noise is the noise that we hear when, when we're not aligned, mind, body, and soul, or me, myself, and I, or chakras uh, within us. But do you remember as that, that kid, when you were able to get that dial turned mm, right into that station, 102.5 or whatever was your, your favorite station, wherever you grew up. I know you grew up in Wisconsin, if I recall. Yes. Um, how did that feel when you got that, that dial dialed in? Do you remember, like, can you go back in that moment, be that little girl, how that felt when you nailed it? I'm actually seeing a vision come through from my inner child right now. I'm standing up on stage and I'm singing in front of an audience with a lot of other little boys and little girls wearing a beautiful dress and singing and not being afraid to perform, just be myself. And to know that I was part of part of this this program, this family, this, this, this unit with, with all the other, all the other children and to be able to share my voice and not having a care in the world about what I look like, what I sounded like, just having confidence in myself at that time and having fun and standing up and performing in front of a live audience, I felt good. How old do you think you were at that time? Do you recall approximately? Um, I want to say I was in second grade. Um, so about seven. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I. I. Yeah. You know, um. I. I asked because the average ego is developed somewhere around the age of five in the children. And so obviously that's the average. That means some it's a little later, others it's maybe earlier, not too many, I suspect, but, and well, um, perhaps maybe your ego hadn't even been developed yet because as you just described it, um, you didn't have the static. You were just present. You were just having fun. Um, and, why I bring up this radio station dial is because really the work that you describe and what, what you have gone through is, is quieting that white noise, quieting that static of all the old stories that you've either held on to, you heard, or you've created, as we all do in our life, because the stories come from our thinking and the truth is, is that those stories aren't true. They're not the truth. What's true is who we are at our heart space. But yet we, we get hooked on a story or multiple stories. And then we, and that story becomes our reality for decades, sometimes for a lifetime. We start acting it out. And we become a prisoner living in a cage 
of our stories that don't serve us. So really the work that you have done and continue to do for yourself and that inspire others to do is, it's truly about breaking out of the cage. Breaking out of the, the cage that has kept you in prison within your own self and experiencing what you refer to as empowerment. I love the word freedom. That's the work I do today. It's, it's about freedom. It's about freedom to just be and to be okay, to love, to learn how to love yourself and to accept what your truth is, not the story that you have perhaps heard, all that white static. It's about coming home to yourself and tuning in that radio station to where it is really, we talk about clarity, we talk about awakenings, we talk about living in a conscious state. That's, that's what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about dialed in to where there's no static anymore. We're not, we're not being impacted by politicians. We're not being impacted by um, people that no longer serve us, that are toxic in thought and behavior. Uh, but just learning how to tune in to who we are and what we are so that we can be free. Yes. I will share with you that the image that I've seen as I've been on this journey, it was never, even though it felt like a cage that I was in, what I would see was those little takeout containers when you'd have leftover food at a Chinese restaurant, the little tiny container. Oh, yeah. A little handle on it. Those. Oh, yeah. So as me like this as a child as tight as possible breaking out of this container. So I know for so many years I played the role of people pleaser, making everyone else happy, being who others wanted me to be, saying what others wanted me to say, and in the meantime, I was miserable. And yes, it felt very much like a cage. You said, uh, if I may paraphrase it, what I heard you say is making people happy. Now, in retrospect, did we, did we, because I'm going to, I'm going to hold your hand in this moment and uh, did we really make people happy or was that just the illusion of our behavior? That was our intention. That's what, if, because if they were happy, then we'd be okay. But how happy were they in retrospect? Yeah. Being able to look at, at others through eyes of compassion and seeing that wounded inner child, that broken little boy or that broken little girl, they want love no different than any one of us. They may be afraid. They may be living out so much fear. That's what helps me is to know that truly are never alone and We're not here to judge others. We're here to love and knowing that it starts from within. I, I think one of the biggest challenges we have is, is uh, when we say we're not here to judge others, we're here to love. It's very challenging for so many, so many millions of people globally, not billions, to not judge others when we don't even have to look in a mirror to see ourselves and we're judging ourselves just through our thoughts or in a mirror. How, how do we learn how to stop being a worse critic 
or our, the judge of ourself in a hurtful way so that we can um, release that of ourselves and, and therefore have less judgment of others and be able to come from the heart space for others, no matter how they're behaving. Now, I'm not, now when I say that, I'm not suggesting that we accept unacceptable behavior. I'm not saying that at all. I know you know that, but for the audience that may have interpreted it that mean that way, I am. I will. I do not endorse being in a relationship with a friend, an employer, a relative, even blood, if it is hurtful to you, emotionally, mentally, physically, sexually, or spiritually. If if they are wounded and they are only know one way to behave and that's coming from their hurt space. Why? Because we know hurt people hurt people. Uh, by no means do I suggest that you try to work through that one in, in uh, other than figure out what's best for you and take steps to protect that inner child that needs that parent to parent them, even, even at our age. Yes, a lot of awareness and setting very, very healthy boundaries. And that was a big part of my journey this year was being okay with continuing to enforce those healthy boundaries, knowing that I was doing what I needed to do to protect all of me Going back to what I said earlier, knowing that all those parts of me were responding and are responding to what I think about myself, how I view myself, even standing in front of the mirror, doing the mirror exercises and saying those words, looking at yourself and saying, I love you, even looking at the parts of you that you may not be in love with, but saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. That they're all coming for the journey. No one is excluded. No part of you should ever be excluded. How do we, what does it look like to begin the, pro, the process of forgiving yourself? Taking time for self-care. That's my non-negotiable every single day. Make that, make the time. And if you're not sure where to begin, the biggest step is being okay with asking for help. So many of us have grown up in environments and I'll be the first one to raise my hand where I felt that I needed to figure everything out on my own, do everything on my own at a very young age. So for me to ask for help, that was huge. And being okay with that, that's not a sign of weakness. That's a strength. And even if you know in your heart or you feel something in your inner being, I don't know what it is about this person, but this teacher or this mentor or this guide or this counselor or this life coach, there's something about him or her that I really resonate with. Take that step. Take the first step and reach out. Make a commitment to you to do the work. What is self-care? look like for you because we all have a different belief system and understanding of what we think self-care is and it may not be what you have in mind or what you experience. Uh, would you mind sharing some of that with us? Oh, I would love to. 
So I love to dance. So I do Latin Zumba. I do yoga, I do Reiki. I also speak to myself or sing to myself or write light language. Um, I do quantum healing when I feel called to do that on myself. Um, meditation, spending time in nature, going for a walk, even asking my inner child, what do you want to do today for fun? Finding that happy balance of your home commitments, work commitments, and play, and knowing that play should be a part of your day. Now, is, is play part of self-care or is that, is that independent of self-care or can it be both? I believe it's both. And sometimes the, the, the information that comes through, it's something so simple, but so powerful. And then other times it's, I want to go on a trip. So do something, doing something fun, connecting with other people, getting fresh air, being out in the sun, finding different ways to raise your vibration. There's so many different tools that I feel called to use even for myself. Like this, this morning, I felt called to inhale rose essential oil very very high vibration the essence of the rose connecting with my heart chakra wearing green today color therapy nourishing from my heart chakra simple things where does um self-improvement uh, how does that get scheduled in? Because if you're doing self-care and then you're working, uh, I, there's no doubt that you are investing in self-improvement for yourself as well. Where does that fit into the non-negotiables? Is it a non-negotiable? Is it a commitment that you make to yourself or is it, I'll get to it when I have time? That's a commitment for me and it's a daily commitment and working it in my schedule, knowing that it's a part of my day, showing up, doing what I need to do to show up for myself so I can show up, also show up for others and everything that I continue to do for self-improvement for me more often than not, I'm sharing that with my clients that I work with, and I'm grateful for that. Beautiful. Knowing that it's not a one-size-fits-all, but to be able to share these tools and these techniques that perhaps they haven't even thought of before. Even stepping out of your comfort zone, doing something, even if, if it scares you to do it because you've never done it before, do it anyway. Challenge yourself. Where does nutrition fit into all of this? Because I know in the last show when we got together, you shared uh, in your earlier years, you had an eating disorder. You were, you were challenged with that. Now I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm asking more about from a nutritional standpoint, what is, uh, how, how do you, how important is it in your life? And what does it look like for you today? It's very important knowing that food, food has, food is information. So if it's a high vibration, you're providing your body and nourishing your body and your mind with high vibrating information, more of the clarity. So I really put a lot of awareness, not in an, in an obsessive way, but really being aware of 
how does my body respond to this food or that food? How do I feel? How does it make me feel what I'm eating, what I'm drinking? I don't even use the word diet for myself anymore. It's a lifestyle, moderation. And if my inner child, if I made a promise to her to have some kind of a, a fun thing, whether that be a beverage or something that I consider fun to eat, I will do everything that I can to have healthier options available to still be able to satiate that part of me and to not beat myself up over it as far as what I'm eating, what I'm drinking. Really enjoying the journey instead of obsessing I don't even look at it anymore from the standpoint of how much fat is in this or calories or carbs, none of that. I look at it from the standpoint of how does this make me feel? And even energetically, as I'm picking out my foods, I do a lot of paleo and gluten-free and raw, fresh, cook at home. I love to go out to eat. I love Mexican food, <laughs> spices, just trying different things and having fun with the experience, enjoying life. So it does, it does make a difference what you're, what you're putting in your body. I'd like to uh, come back to your book uh, for those that are maybe caught us a little late. This is a, a new book that uh, Ann Miller has just published. It's available on Amazon booksellers from heart to pen to paper and inspirational poems for the soul. This book is incredible. It's such a beautiful expression of your healing journey. And um, well, I'd like to invite you, if you're, if you're up to it, perhaps uh, in this moment, to pick out one of your, uh, whatever you're feeling from the book you'd like to read, one of the poems that okay. uh, I know, obviously, each poem has special meaning to you. But in this moment, um, pick a poem, and, and if you're willing to share it with us, I'd love that. I would love to. Thank you. So this is from chapter five, which is called Sweet Freedom. And the poem is, what is it that you didn't want to see? All the pain buried inside of me, what is it? All the guilt, shame, fear, worry, and doubt, what is it? The many years of not feeling good enough, worthy enough, smart enough, tough enough. What is it? All the years I stuffed down the pain and numbed out. What is it? All the tears I held inside while I tried to sort things out. What is it? All the darkness and dark nights I didn't want to face. Who are you? I am free. I am ready, I am worthy, I am love, I am enough, I am heard, I am a voice, I am powerful, I am me. Beautiful. Thank you. You mentioned earlier in the in this segment that you learned how to read what you had written out loud. And um, it's something that I learned how to do. I, I started writing uh, a couple of years ago along the shorelines of Huntington Beach uh, early on in my healing journey. And, um, and at some point, 
I started to read it out loud and well, it changed everything for me. Tell me how reading out loud what you have written, now whether it be a poem or just be a journal entry, a blog, whatever you wanna call it, it is. But how does that change the experience for you, Ann Miller? Through sound, the frequency and vibration, it's another very, very powerful healing modality. Mm -hmm. So saying the words, knowing that all of you, all of your cells, your inner child, and me, myself, and I is responding. And as I reread a lot of these poems, actually every single one that I wrote out loud, tears, letting the tears out, the happiness, the smiles, there was anger. Some grieving, I, I know for sure, right? I suspect I should say. Pardon me? Some, some grieving. Yes. Yeah. Now, when I say grieving, um, tell me more about that. Who, who were you grieving for? Grieving for, wow, that's, <laughs> that's, uh, I give you my, My answer is grieving what I felt like to me was a lost childhood. And mm. the years where couldn't take, take things back, grieving those lost parts of me grieving those that were in my life. So whether that was friends, lovers, family members, coworkers, grieving the process of who was still here and who wasn't. And also grieving what I call my, um, like a rebirth of sorts, shedding those layers that I no longer resonated with and being willing to let that go. Part of that surrender work and embracing the newness that awaited the new me it was actually always who I really was. Remembering who I am. And that, that's so beautiful. I, it was a setup question because I just, I think I know you well enough to know that you gave, you gave, you shared the answer from your heart, which is your truth. It's my truth as well. I, I, I share this very openly that in the first year and a half to two years of my healing process, when I hit my rock bottom and I was near death and I was going through the physical healing, but in order to physically heal and reverse diseases, and I had a plethora of those diagnoses and prognoses, uh, just under a dozen, um, I had to also go through the grieving process, the healing process of my mind, body, and soul, all of me the me, myself, and I component of the emotional and mental. And I cried every day. And I hadn't done that since I was a child. But when I exited out of my home, as it had been for almost 30 years, and I created a safe space for myself, a safe environment, I learned how to write. I learned how to feel. I learned how to reveal it. And through that process, um, I did a lot of healing because I too was grieving. I was grieving the loss of a marriage that I walked out of my choice, but it still was a death of a relationship. It was a passing. 
And so I gave myself permission to, to grieve. It took me a solid year to go through that one relationship that I was in for 29 years. Uh, by the time my divorce was final, it was 30, but I also lost my dad three months after I got out of the hospital. I had to go through that grieving loss. But the most important grieving loss that I went through was me, was truly um, accepting that uh, the man that I had become, I no longer wanted to be and was it. And I had to be willing to let go of him and uh, not in a mean spirited way, but in a loving way, you know, um, and honor him and be able to love him. But that was, I refer to it as the rebirthing process, as you just so beautifully expressed. And through that process, I learned how to um, come home, you know, go through that same process you have. And it's just, it was such a, it's been such an incredibly beautiful experience. Um, painful, but you know, we have a choice in life. We can live in pain or we could feel the pain. And I was living in pain for 54 years. And when I woke up, literally, emotionally, spiritually woke up in October of 15, in a hospital near death, I knew what I needed to do. I knew that I just needed to start to have the courage. I needed to rebirth. I needed to have the courage to change. But through that process, my life has um, transformed into an absolutely beautiful new life. Uh, doesn't mean that it, it's simple. It is simple. It's not easy. Not easy means that we still have to face challenges. We still have to face shadows that we thought we've worked through and new holes, you know, poke through and new opportunities for growth and learning about ourselves. But ultimately through this journey of rebirthing, it truly really is about coming home to that little child within us. And finally understanding that I no longer have to wait for someone to show up to love him, to nurture him, to nourish him. Uh, no longer had to seek someone to make him happy outside of me. That that today is my responsibility as the parent of myself, as my higher self, to honor that little boy, to pay attention to his needs, and to show up unconditionally every single day, no matter how I'm feeling. And, uh, and that's why I love having this conversation with you because we're speaking the same language. It's just, we just had a different road to get here. Um, but I'm so grateful and so happy to have had this opportunity to share with you today and uh, to, to suggest to those that are on their own healing journey, invest the $12.97 on Amazon, buy this book today. Because I know, I believe from my own experience of reading this book that it can actually be a tool to help you in wherever you're at in your healing journey in this moment, you'll hear something, you'll read something, you'll feel something within this book. And you know, you will know that not only did it come from Anne, but she speak in the same language that you may be feeling and you'll identify with it. And it may be the breakthrough that you need just for today. Thank you, Jay.
Thank you. How has writing this beautiful book of love and forgiveness and acceptance and hope and inspiration changed your life? It still feels so surreal. It's been this amazing process and being able to, to connect with all these beautiful souls such as yourself and everyone that's that that I worked with on this this project they all played an integral part of this journey and I see how this book of poetry is not just a book. It's a very powerful healing tool that I'm not only using for myself, but looking at other ways of using it as a tool to help others within my own practice. There's more coming with yeah. how, I, how I use this tool. And I'm excited about that. This is just the start. <laughs> Beautiful. And I'd like to uh, invite you to perhaps uh, share some closing thoughts on the show today and, and then close us out with one more poem. Okay, thank you. First, I'd like to start with gratitude. I'd like to thank everyone that participated, participated in this process. Thanking and also thanking myself. And to anyone that's still struggling out there, I encourage you to keep going. Don't give up on you. Know that there is help available and that it is very, very courageous of you to take that first step and to ask for help. It's not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength and that willingness to start making changes. And again, if I can do it, you can do it. And that's from my heart to yours. The poem that I would like to share is from chapter three, The Inner Child. I wrote this poem for my mom. A daughter's love. No matter the outcome, no matter the storm, know in my heart, I will always love you. Time has passed, tears have been shed, Heartfelt wounds have been healed. A daughter's love has no limits. Bearing feelings straight from her soul. Unconditional love for the one who brought me into this world. And for that, I am grateful. Still chokes me up when I read the words, especially out loud. Why? Why this particular poem chokes you up? With my mom, I've had to continue to honor 
my inner child and all of me and continue to set those boundaries that are healthy for me, knowing that I can forgive, but it's okay to love someone from a distance until she's ready to come back to her own heart. I am at peace with that. Beautiful. And thank you so much for stepping in today in to yourself and in to the studio with me and connecting at this level, this soul to soul, heart space level. Uh, I have truly enjoyed this conversation, truly enjoyed um, speaking our truths showing and sharing vulnerability, talking about things that truly do matter, that are important, most important. And knowing that no matter what, that we are okay. That no matter what, as long as you stay consistent to yourself, and you keep showing up, um, it's only gonna get better and better. Not that we're chasing it to, we're not chasing it to be better because I speaking for myself, I'm not chasing it. I just know that when I show up today, amazing things unfold. And when I say amazing, some of them are painful, but they're here for a lesson. And once I understand the lesson, there's the growth. And so we get to uh, embrace a new way of living today. And for that, I am in fact, uh, humbled and grateful for. And uh, I'm excited to see where 2020 brings you and what it brings to you and what you bring to it. And, uh, and with that, I'm gonna ask you if you could just stay in the studio for a few moments. I would like to thank those that joined us live today on this special edition of Real People, Real Stories. I wanna thank Mary Kelly, my angel, who uh, consistently shows up for us for herself and then for me as well in this journey. Elizabeth coming in from Canada one of my Sacred Hearts Rising uh, sisters. Uh, I'm gonna be on her show, uh, interviewed uh, in the middle of December. I was invited to, to step into that uh, event. Tamara, thank you for joining us. Paula Adams, good to see you. Uh, these are just some of the people that I'm seeing here. Belinda, good to see you today. Thank you for joining us. Michelle, Amanda, um, Abulita, thank you for being here as well. Julie Kiss. Um, if you didn't catch us live and you catch us on replay, the good news is, is you are just on time. There's, we're not late. We're not early. We just, we're just right on time, our time. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the work that I do in bringing forward stories like what Anne has shared today, stories of hope, stories of inspiration, stories of truth, stories of healing. And with that, um, be safe if you're in the United States. Have a uh, have a good Thanksgiving holiday. If you're overseas, um, thank you for joining us as well. We'll catch you next time on Real People, Real Stories, Raw. My name is Jay Rothman. Thank you. <laughs>